This is the KQI Air. It's been a while since I've been this excited for an electric scooter at the $1,000 price. Uh, yeah. For me, the Air marks a new era in featherweight electric scooters as it excels in places where other ultralight scooters often fall short. The one-line sales pitch for the Air is that it has the specs and performance of the KQI3 Pro, one of my favorite single motor scooters on the market, all wrapped up in a carbon fiber frame that weighs 26 pounds. Sounds pretty good if you ask me. It's almost comical how light this is, especially after picking up any other scooter. That's too easy! Even scooters that are considered on the light end of the spectrum feel heavy after picking this one up. It's one of those scooters that you don't even need to fold it to pick up easily. You literally just grab the thing by the stem and walk up a set of stairs with it. It's almost impossibly light. That's too easy! But what does this do better than other lightweight electric scooters? I'll walk you through the build, features, specs, and performance of the KQI Air, tell you where it beats other options in this class, and maybe where it falls short. Let's start with the build quality. Making a scooter this light usually requires compromising construction quality, but the engineers at NEW have done it again and have done an amazing job of balancing the two. They really put to shame some of the rickety, flimsy, featherweight scooters on the market with the Air's sleek, stable carbon fiber construction. And the carbon fiber is incredibly cool. Not only is it stupidly light and strong, but it also looks amazing. It makes the KQI Air the kind of scooter that you want to show off, the kind that you put next to your desk so you can glance at it throughout the day. There's nothing better than having a scooter that makes you want to ride it just because you have it. Almost everything from the handlebars to the stem to the swing arms to the deck is made of carbon fiber. The Air uses a magnesium alloy for the deck bridge because the complex manufacturing of carbon fiber makes this intricate part expensive to create. Magnesium also has a very high strength to weight ratio, so it's perfect for a part like this. New did, however, decide to indulge their engineers and let them make the KQI Air X, which has this part in carbon fiber. It only saves a tiny bit of weight and also bumps up the cost of the Air X quite a bit, but if you do want a fully carbon fiber scooter, it's out there as an option. Other than that, both models are identical, so I would say most people will probably want to go with just the standard Air. Folding is as simple and quick as other new models with the one-click deck latch system that I love so much. Folding literally takes three seconds in either direction. Another aspect that the KQI Air does better than other scooters in this category is the ride quality. The first thing that stands out is the enormous riding platform. This is wider than anything in the class, and as a result, you don't feel like you're riding on a tiny little scooter. This is an actual luxury, ultralight, adult-sized scooter. Even the handlebar height is above average at 40 inches. It feels just as comfortable and natural as riding any of the KQI3 models. The 9.5 inch tubeless air filled tires are the same ones on the KQI3 models and are a huge upgrade in ride quality over the solid tires that you often see on scooters in this class. No suspension means lower weight, but it also means a bit bumpier ride and the pneumatic tires offer a happy medium between solid tires and suspension. Another cool feature that I don't think I've ever seen on another scooter is the concave deck, which combined with the wide riding platform gives the air a distinctly skateboard feel. It's fantastic to carve on, and with it being so light, it's stupidly nimble and easy to control. It's almost concerning how much it doesn't feel like you're riding on anything. Almost like you're riding on air. The cockpit has gone fully minimalist as well with an extremely sleek, attractive design. Turn signals cap each end of the handlebars without being an eyesore, and the black grips are nicely textured. A single brake lever is all that's needed, and they've even opted for a twist throttle instead of a thumb throttle to keep the cockpit as simple as possible. The twist throttle is not my favorite, and they definitely would have been able to do a thumb throttle again while maintaining the aesthetics, but it's also not the worst thing ever, especially with how often I found myself using the cruise control. The display controls are built into the throttle to further add to that integrated feel. Imagine the idea was to make it as low profile as possible to maximize portability and minimize anything getting snagged on your clothes or anything else as you walk with it in your hand. They probably would have made it without the brake lever if they could have. 
The techie modern feel is enhanced by the NFC card that comes on this clip, but you could also easily slip it into your wallet. You don't have to use the power button at all. You just hold the card to the screen and it clicks on. The classic new halo light and ambient deck lighting complete the futuristic feel of this scooter. As mentioned, this is almost identical to the KQI3 Pro on the performance side of things. 48 volt, 9.4 amp hour battery, single reared 350 watt motor, claimed top speed of 20 miles an hour, claimed range of 31 miles. And it also passes the feel test. Riding both the KQI-3 and the KQI Air one after the other, I really don't notice any difference in acceleration or speed. The big difference is really the weight of the scooter under you. With the batteries almost identical, the KQI-3 has a slightly larger battery, I was curious to see if there'd be any difference in the range between the two. For me, a 200 pound rider, riding in the highest riding mode on mostly flat ground, I got between 15 and 16 miles in my range tests that I did daily for a few days in a row. This is exactly the same as the range I got on my KQI3 Pro. That's equal to about three miles per battery bar and is a reliable way to track how much mileage you have left. Paul, who is 35 pounds lighter than me, was able to get over 20 miles of range with the KQI3 Pro, so I imagine lighter riders will be able to get around that range with the Air in the highest riding mode. You get two riding modes that are switchable on the scooter, but in order to get to the highest speed mode, you need to use the app. My personal preference is for all the modes to be accessible and changeable on the scooter, since I often have issues with scooter apps. As with previous new scooters, the hardware is exceptional, but I think the app experience could use a little bit more work to iron out the wrinkles. Getting to the settings requires making a new account, connecting to the scooter via Bluetooth, and then completing a one-time riding safety tutorial. Once connected, I noticed that the headlights and turn lights would just blink at regular intervals to show that the scooter was still connected to Bluetooth, and the only way I could figure out how to make it stop was disconnecting from the Bluetooth. But then the next time I went to ride, it wouldn't connect to the Bluetooth again, and I didn't have access to the ability to track my ride or monitor the battery level or anything like that. I recently rode a VMAX brand scooter, which connects to the app in one tap with no sign in or binding required. It was so easy and seamless, and it showed me what scooter apps could be. My issues with the app is a minor blemish on what would otherwise be a near perfect scooter for the audience it's intended for. I've given my feedback to Neo, and if they can fix the issues with the software, then the Air has almost no meaningful flaws. The reality is that either way, this is probably the best featherweight scooter on the market. Another thing I was surprised to see is that it's suitable for the big dog riders with a weight capacity of 265 pounds. It also has an IP55 water and dust resistance rating, which makes it suitable for just about any riding conditions, including rain. The stack of reasons why this is one of the best last mile commuter scooters on the market is very tall at this point, and obviously the KQI Air gets a big recommendation from me. If you've made it this far in the review, you probably already know if this fits what you're looking for, so just go check it out down below at the link in the description. New has made another fantastic scooter, and this is gonna be one that sits next to my door for a long time for daily errands, or to toss in the car for travel, or a hundred other things. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. That's too easy!